welcome back to part two. <laughs> We're back. We're back. Uh, I'm not sure if you caught the beginning. Dom won. Congrats. Congrats again. again. I did it again. Let's go. Again. Uh, again, you came here for the love of the game. You had the fire ignited from beating from Boston beating you, and right or right? No, sorry, you beat Boston. No, no, he beat me. That's no, what so was. Yes, yes. Let's not lose sight of that. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what. No, I just can remember exactly. So you again. That was the that was the goal. Now we're on Nadu. So give us a quick lowdown of your your build of Nadu, why you chose Nadu, and yeah, just kind of go from there. Yeah, well, the Nadu stuff is just kind of messed up. Like, Nadu is a, is a broken card. Uh, so we saw on stream. <laughs> yeah. <and laughs> it, the, the scaffolding of the, the Seven and Breakfast stuff really uh, crosses over nicely. So obviously Nomad, Shuko, uh, being all enabled to both. Um, and you end up having this weird redundancy where like, like you have four Seven four Nadu now, you have four Nomads, and then Shuko, and then Oh, it's a saga, whatever extra yeah. you want. So you can get A plus B pretty consistently. Um, and so you can do the Tomon, Noma, Sanju Seppo thing, kill them on the spot. But then Nadu also lets you play this much like more resilient, grindy game if you're going long too. And then you just surround it with the usual, like, you brainstorm force of all sorts of power shares, yep. just all, all that good stuff. And Teferi is there just to kind of re remove problem and permanence, uh, make sure that it's kind of like a defense grid when it lands, essentially. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff, especially post board, where people can try and interact with uh, suddenly the Cephalic combo, but also the Nadu one as well. And so Teferi is just a really nice preemptive way to deal yeah, with mm -hmm. all of that. And then, uh, you know, as you, you saw in that match, sometimes yes. it's uh, clearing the way for your combo piece to go off. Sometimes it's uh, delaying their big threat, like bouncing their frog or their motide, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then sometimes it's bouncing back the, uh, the Soul Guide Lantern, Ley Line of the Void, whatever hate card they have to, uh, to set it up. So uh, great card overall. And then, in this build with Ladder Halfling, you have this yeah. uh, this looming threat of uncountable yeah. Teferi, yes. so it makes everything else uncountable, yes. and, yes. and, and you yes. go from there. So, uh, yeah. Nanu as well, like all of it. Yeah, yeah. So. Crazy. Uh, well, yeah, you, you can go to on uh, Tamon Halfling turns you uncountable Nadu, and then they have to kind of contest that, or the moment you find the Nomads of the Shuka, you, you go from there. But yep, exactly. yeah, I mean, the Nadu stuff is, as you see in modern especially, like Nadu is a mess up card, and the tools are there to really exploit it. Um, and then the Surfload Breakfast uh, half, I've always had this kind of fascination with going back. 14, 15 years, but like I bought a set of Shuko's like a, a dollar a piece to... Pretty cheap now. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, yeah, now. it was a bargain, yeah. I dug them out of my, my parents' attic. Yes, uh, there you go. But um, I, I've always loved the idea of that. It's just like a very funny idea for a combo. Um, and now it, I mean, it's always been floating around Lexi here and there. Of course, yeah. There was a brief time where like people were saying it was one of the best decks. Yeah. Now it actually, I think, is one of the good. best decks. Oh, it's strong. Right now, everything is a, a tier below uh, blue black. But I, I think once that, that dark cloud is lifted and you can uh, do a bunch of different stuff, then uh, I think more people sh will and should uh, explore this. Ultimately, I. I I think just like a pure Nadu deck might actually be more resilient in the end, it'd be a better choice. Okay. Uh, but in terms of just uh, good brain chemicals, getting to play both of these broken combo decks matched together was, yeah, yeah. Uh, was, was what I wanted, so. Makes sense. Uh, and again, just any other random one-ofs that kind of got you uh, maybe through, a turn through, through today's tournament that were like in the sideboard even or anything like that, that was like, this is one card that I, I need to play because this deck's just going to be in the room. Well, but many people have asked me, what is a 60-second card in your, de in your list? Whoa, and uh, wait, there's a few different answers to that what? question. Wait, your, uh, card is not, your, your deck's not 60 cards. Well, no, so I... Oh, I I, 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 I didn't even count the deck list. <laughs> so, so right? I, okay, I, I sorry, played yeah. uh, Yorion Nadu Breakfast oh, last night. Oh, okay, uh, okay. That, that had a lot of one-offs, let me tell you. But yeah, that, yeah. that was even more disjointed. Uh, <laughs> I tried to slim it down, play a more conventional list here, um, and there's always this thing of like, well, some of us have the main deck Saga Lantern for your Urza Saga. Okay. Realistically, how often are you getting that instead of just finding your Shuko, finding whatever? Yeah, um, yeah. So there's a lot of these marginal decisions you get to make, and you really have to think about is this worth a slot? Is uh, is this actually going to come up in practice? Because you already have a lot of cards you don't want to draw in your deck, right? Like Dread Return, which is yeah. a Digimon card. I use it three cards, that thing. Oh, no. um, <laughs> Amoeba, I, it pitches to force, right? Yeah, that's the excuse. Yeah, it pitches yeah, to force. force. That's fair. Yeah. I ideally don't want to be doing that. Of course. Um, so this is one of the downsides of the Seven combo is it saddles you with five plus just dead cards in your deck, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you saw that match against Edgar. The blue black deck is so disruptive, and cards like uh, Voidwalker and Bowmaster both break up the separate combo. So, so I just sideboarded the entire thing out. Ah, yeah, there we go. Okay, so everything we, was we were talking about. Uh, yeah, yes, turned okay. into more of a combo control deck on the control side, more yes. more so than the pure combo side. Um, 
And so, yeah, in, in the main deck, it's relatively disciplined uh, for, for what it is. Um, yeah, have some thoughts on where I might take it from there. And then I guess the memories journey would stand out, actually, because uh, the stark Cephalo combo, you have a Cabal Therapy. So the idea ah, there okay. is if your Dread Return gets stuck in your hand, you can uh, or your Oracle, yeah, you therapy yourself, get it out of there, then flash it back. Or if you expect the opponent has uh, something like Endurance, which Given the therapy doesn't actually work against the stock list because you just therapy endurance, then you can mill yourself again. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, yeah. It, it is better against me, but um, it, you know, surgical extraction and stuff like that, same deal. What I found was is yet another card you don't want to draw. I don't want to play the one underground C or whatever, so I theoretically can cast it. And then memory journey, you saw again scam. It's like this yeah. is oh, this oh, is was, a blue card and perfect. it's graveyard hate that can't yeah. be briefed. That was flawless. Um, I was like, oh man, what what a card. And then against graveyard hate, you can set it up to where you mill yourself. They uh, they uh, crack their soul guide, whatever it is. Yeah, put it back. You shuffle back your oracle, and then you can manually cast it the next turn if you have the time. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah this, uh, th I think that that's a, a big improvement. But other than that, uh, looking at the sideboard, it's mostly just like mishmash of of stuff. Nothing too exceptional. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of ways you can take the shell, uh, and it's nice to have that kind of passion project to work on. Uh, certainly once uh, Grief or something else gets banned, yes. but uh, even in the time being, like I think the deck has what it takes, and once uh, Blue Black is cut down a little bit, then can hit the ground running and really uh, so get I, right on it. I have a quick question. What's your thought on Grief right now against this deck, against other decks you played in the past, like yeah. Lands, uh, uh, Green White Depths? What's your thought on Grief? Just, uh, just a, a quick thing. I, it's, crazy. it's obviously an amazing card, and in Legacy right now, your deck selection is gated by how vulnerable you are to Grief. So I'm showing up with like literal lands, great deck against Grief, yep. right? Yep. You, you can very easily win games without ever casting a spell. Uh, you don't care much about the body, so on and so forth. Uh, but you're forced into that position because of how good Grief is. So if you watch most of my matches against Blue Black with various decks, mm -hmm. you come away thinking, oh, what's all the fuss about? Grief isn't that good. But we're forced <laughs> into that position because of how good it is, right? So um, yeah, I would like to play a deck that is weak to Grief at some point, uh, but can't really justify it under current circumstances. So um, that said, I, I think Grief is it's almost become the scapegoat in a way for like larger structural issues. So let's say we get to it looks like it's going to be the end of August at this rate, right? Yeah. Okay, we wake up, Grief is banned. I think Blue Black of some form is still... Oh, yeah. it, The question is, it, it's not like, is it still good? Is, is it the best deck by itself, or is it just one of the best decks? Yeah, 100%, so yes. If you, maybe you want to go further, ban something else, take it down a peg, but um, I think there's a tendency to fixate on the Grief experience, which it lives up to the name, right? And yeah, like, Of course, that's, it's, a, it's, it's a scam. If that's, if that's driving people away, then you you want them to come back and maybe grief has to go for that but i i would not get your hopes up too much about well if you just if you solve this one problem everything will be fine everything's like, the boogeyman like, under the yeah. bed that's waiting right for the next exactly. I mean, essentially like the the scam deck is you know, you look at legacy over the past 10 15 years every other iteration of legacy basically has been the blue tempo deck yeah. has just been the s tier deck mm -hmm. and so we we ban like Red and Six, Arcanist, Treasure Cruise, Ragavan, just the, there's Death like Charming. a dozen lists, a mm -hmm. dozen cards on the list, so they're there just because they elevate that shelf from like A tier to S tier. Yes. Um, and the reanimate stuff is like a very flashy new way of doing it, but it's, yeah. it's just instead of attacking with Delver or something, well, now you're getting Archon or Attraction to play on turn yeah, two. Like that's, it's that shell taken to its logical extreme, and it turns out once you do that, it's actually pretty terrifying. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes. Makes you sense. saw that game water get you. Yeah, yeah that was just like, oh, get this blot, just did we had to do, right? Yeah, so. I mean, that, that's, that's a nut draw that will just seem all over anything. Of course. Right? Um, and then, as you also saw in some of those games, you can pivot into a uh, you know, frog, uh, Void Walker, Bowmaster, Brazen Bora, Arcar Squeeze going long. Like, you can very easily just shrug off all of the like deranged hate cards that people bring in against mm -hmm. you because mm -hmm. they're not that good anymore. So, I, yeah, I, I, I think that that deck, like, the broken A plan is really good, but also just everything else is doing also really is good. also very strong too. Yes, the frog, the the Void Walkers, the Merc Titans, whatever. I don't know. You can debate that. Yeah. Debate, but like, I, yeah, I, I think it's not. It's it is grief, but it's not just grief. Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes Locked sense. Pieces. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, uh, I mean, again, Bant Nadu, it, it's a deck. It, it does something. Sure is. Uh, awesome. <laughs> now, uh, just to, I mean, a quick little wrap up. Are you going to continue brewing with this? Are you going to take out the? Are you thinking of keeping the same shell, playing it for next the next few weeks? Are 
Are you uh, again brewing? What's the, yeah. what, what's the game plan? I, there's other stuff I want to try. Yeah. I, I always play the Cloud Post deck today. Okay. Uh, proxy that one up. Uh, I think there are a lot of these decks where someone makes that first step to put them on the map again, but then you need other people to kind of pick up that what? torch and yes. run with it and uh, kind of iterate further. So I, I think you can do that with that deck. Um, this deck, there's a lot of ways you can build it. And yeah, I. I Especially after this, I, I'm motivated to put the work in to do that and yeah, have yeah. some ideas for where to take it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, a show like this, right? You've got the the blue cards that define legacy, good removal, everything else. Uh, and so, if you can be like solid combo control deck with backup plans, uh, that is a recipe for you know best deck in a lot of formats, including this one right now. Yeah, yes. right with blue black. So, uh, not saying Nadu's going to take over that yes, that course, role, yeah. but I think it's. It's gonna, it is a good deck right now, will be even better. So yeah, I think it's worth investing in, putting the time in. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Dom. Is there anything, you know, any socials or anyone you want to shout out uh, before we wrap up this little piece here? Do you have a yeah, YouTube or I, anything? Uh, <laughs> maybe, not just yet, but uh, yeah, I mean, shout out, as I said, to Boston for lending me this uh, this beautiful deck, uh, to uh, to Jim and to everyone else you know, at Legacy of the North and here at ETB for you know, helping to put on these events, which attracted mm -hmm. A, a good, great enough turnout that we had to raise the cap and six, yes. add another six round in. I know, yeah. Uh, clear. yeah had nuts. People, a few people coming in from the States, I believe. Oh, as, was as, there actually? I think so. Oh, well, I, I think there's someone oh, who tried to? would try to, and then the whole like uh, play now thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but the, the, the thought was there. Um, exactly. At least they tried. Yeah. 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 And right? yeah, we, we have a really nice, vibrant, competitive legacy scene yeah. here, yeah. and it, it is because of people like that putting the work in to really promote this um, and make it happen. So yeah, thank you for all of that. Uh, socials, uh, find me posting, if you like, on uh, Twitter at Dom and Javier. Um, mm -hmm. And I, uh, yeah. Go watch some NRG footage, because he's on there too. Yeah, yeah you, you, you can find me yeah. on YouTube, even yeah. if it's not. <laughs> Just search him uh, up, you might find yeah, yeah. Even if it's not on my channel. Um, yeah. I do, you know, I, I write weekly for SCG and uh, have a Patreon for like more dedicated strategy yeah, content, yeah. so yeah. you know, might see a in-depth look at this on That's there awesome. as well for uh, the legacy fans out there as well. Um, more of a focus on, you know, modern in particular, but whatever the RCQ, RC format of choice is, but mm -hmm. always like to throw a bone to the legacy people out there too, so. So yeah. Sweet. Well, thank you very much and congrats again yes, thank you. on thank you. Uh, winning. And you know, thanks for everybody that's been watching through the entire time. Uh, from all of us here at Enter the Battlefield, right? Us as commentators yes. and I think all the players as well. Uh, we've had a great day. 66 players at our Legacy event, right? Our 3K. Thanks very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the night. See ya.